Hello, this is Pastor Patrick Hines. I want to press on uh, in J. Gresson Machen's Christianity and Liberalism, my original uh, edition of it from 1923. Uh, just after the first, actually didn't even get through the first full paragraph, but I want to do a brief program today and just work through this great classic. He writes, the type of religion which rejoices in the pious sound of traditional phrases, regardless of their meanings, or shrinks from controversial matters, will never stand amid the shocks of life. There's a lot in that sentence. Um, the liberals and even neo-orthodox people that were really were just a different form of liberal, you don't need to worry about what neo-orthodox means, but um, used Christian terminology, but radically redefined. And I mean, they spoke about the resurrection of Christ, but they weren't talking about a bodily resurrection. They spoke about um, the, the atoning work of Christ and the work of Jesus and the cross of Jesus, but they didn't, they weren't speaking about those terms uh, with what the Bible says they mean. And the thing is, um, that's what Machen is criticizing here. The liberals were using Christian terminology and language, but they weren't Christians. And they didn't mean these phrases and uh, terms the way that historic Christian theology has always meant them. He goes on uh, here, you know, listen to that again. The type of religion which rejoices in the pious sound of traditional phrases, regardless of their meanings, or shrinks from controversial matters, will never stand amid the shocks of life. The thing is, if you're a true Christian, you, you can't shrink from controversial matters because of all the imagery in scripture that we're at war. Uh, you are enlisted as a soldier, uh, 2 Timothy uh, says, you are a soldier of Christ Jesus. Um, you are engaged in spiritual warfare. You're engaged in a truth war, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the, the weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, are not carnal, but spiritual for the pulling down of strongholds and casting down arguments and every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, and the weapons of our warfare, um, it's spiritual war. Uh, it's not tanks and guns and knives or anything like that. It's the truth. And that's what the apostles of Christ went out to do. They went out to preach the truth and to argue and to persuade and to refute error. And the idea of being a, a believer but having no stomach for controversy, that's just not part of the Christian life. Uh, you are, if you're a true Christian, you are in the Lord's army and you're at war for the truth and you're at war for the souls of uh, everybody on earth. Uh, Machen continues on here. In the sphere of religion, as in other spheres, the, thing, the things about which men are agreed are apt to be the things that are least worth holding. The really important things are the things about which men will fight. And, you know, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, that evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And he let him understand and know you're going to be at war for the rest of your life. You're going to be involved in a truth war, and you're going to have to be willing to stand your ground, and you can't compromise and knuckle in. And, you know, that's the thing about, that's, that's why Machen is remembered. Machen understood the really important things are the things that people will fight about. The things that people are apt to agree about um, are usually things that are the least worth holding, they're the least important. But things like, what is the instrumental cause of a sinner's justification before God? That is worth fighting over because heaven and hell are at stake. Um, was the Lord Jesus really born of a virgin? Harry Emerson Fosdick said, well, you know, one theory of the virgin birth is that it happened. And another theory is that, you know, it didn't. Um, that's worth fighting over. If the Lord Jesus was not actually in space-time history born of a virgin, then everything we believe is false. You know, I asked a, a group of, of youth, uh, high school kids, at a church in Mississippi years ago. There are about 12 of them in the room. And this was shocking to me, um, their response. I asked them, because we were talking about the, the essentials of the Christian faith. We were just talking about the doctrines of, of the Christian faith. I asked them if it was proven and demonstrated historically that Jesus stayed dead and that he did not rise from the, gr from the grave. Would any of you still go to church? Ten of them said yes. 
10 out of 12 said, yeah. I said, why? That would mean everything we believe is false. Well, we, we still need to learn about morals and things like that. I just, it blew my mind that they answered like that. Two of them, two of them, thankfully, uh, were well grounded enough in scripture to say, no, there'd be no reason to come to church because the Bible wouldn't be true then. Okay, so the things that are the most important are the things about which men will fight. And that's why Machen wrote this book, because the liberals were denying not peripheral things, not things that aren't really worth that much. They were denying the heart and soul of the entire Christian faith, from the inspiration of the Bible to the substitutionary atoning work of Christ, salvation. I mean, when liberals talk about salvation, it's like many of them are talking about, you know, salvation from poverty or from being lonely or, or things like that. Now, loneliness is a, is a tough thing. Um, and poverty is a bad thing. But is that what the Bible means when it speaks about being saved? No. It mean, it's talking about being saved from the righteous and just wrath and punishment of God for our sins. Now listen to what Machen goes on to say here. I'm, this is, okay, now we're in the second paragraph. In the sphere of religion in particular, the present time is a time of conflict. So this is a century ago. This is 1923. The great redemptive religion, which has always been known as Christianity, is battling against a totally diverse type of religious belief, which is only the more destructive of the Christian faith because it makes use of traditional Christian terminology. It's what Romans 16 verses 17 and 18 refers to as smooth words of flattery, subtleties of speech. Okay, when the devil deceives people and when his agents in the church deceive people, they don't tell you they're here to deceive you. They will try to sound as Christian as possible to lure people in. Okay, so this diverse type of religious belief, this liberal belief, um, is destructive of the Christian faith because it makes use of Christian, ter Christian terminology. Listen to what he says next. This modern non-redemptive religion is called modernism or liberalism. Notice he calls it a non-redemptive religion. That's because they didn't teach that man was a sinner in need of salvation from the wrath of God. It goes on. That Machen says, both names are unsatisfactory, modernism and liberalism. The latter, liberalism in particular, is question-begging. The movement designated as liberalism is regarded as liberal only by its friends. To its opponents, it seems to involve a narrow ignoring of many relevant facts. And indeed, the movement is so various in its manifestations that one may almost despair of finding any common name which will apply to all its forms. <laughs> yeah, why, why was liberalism so diverse and so... Um, amorphous and so impossible to really nail down. It's like trying to nail a piece of jello to the wall because it cut itself loose from scripture. Once you're cut loose from the Bible, you know, you, you'll say and believe anything and use any terms to describe it. Machen says, but manifold as are the forms in which this movement appears, the root of the movement is one. The many varieties of modern liberal religion are rooted in naturalism. That is, in the denial of any entrance of the creative power of God as distinguished from the ordinary course of nature in connection with the origin of Christianity. And of course, what is that coming from? That's from German higher criticism. They were anti-supernatural. They were anti-supernatural. And you need to know that all forms of progressivism and legalism, or excuse me, or liberalism are legalism in the end. They reduce Christianity to nothing more than ethics. They reduce Christianity to nothing more than ethics. They get rid of the supernatural, which how can you possibly make sense of the Bible without the supernatural? I mean, the opening verse of the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's not nature. That's God outside of nature creating nature. And all of the redemptive events, the exodus, the incarnation, the mighty miracles of Jesus, the cross work of Christ, where he pays for the sins of his people, his resurrection from the dead. These are all supernatural events. The Bible, you can't make any sense out of it if you are a naturalist rather than a supernaturalist. Whereas I would be a supernaturalist. I believe God created the universe and God governs it by, by his providence and at times intervenes with the miraculous in his great redemptive historical events. Now listen to Machen. The word naturalism is here used in a sense somewhat different from its philosophical meaning. In this non-philosophical sense, it describes with fair accuracy the real root 
of what is called by what may turn out to be a degradation of an originally noble word, liberal religion. The rise of this modern naturalistic liberalism has not come by chance, but has been occasioned by important changes which have recently taken place in the conditions of life. The past 100 years, okay, so for him, he's thinking of 1823 to 1923. The past 100 years have witnessed the beginning of a new era in human history, which may conceivably be regretted, but certainly cannot be ignored. By the most uh, obstinate conservatism, the change is not something that lies beneath the surface and might be visible only to the discerning eye. On the contrary, it forces itself upon the attention of the plain man at a hundred points. Modern inventions and the industrialism that has been built upon them have given us in many respects a new world to live in. We can no more remove ourselves from that world than we can escape from the atmosphere that we breathe. So because the scientific advancements were so remarkable in terms of technology between 1823 and 1923, uh, people started thinking, well, you know, how can someone who uh, sees all these amazing machines and automobiles were, were just starting to, to come in vogue then? And and people that go to the dentist and people that, that do everything that, that we have in these modern technological advances. How can we still believe in things like the virgin birth, the birth of Christ and heaven and hell and angels and demons and things like that? But at the end of the book, what Machen really calls for is honesty. Liberals, people who don't believe in the supernatural, they just need to repudiate the Christian faith and stay home. Don't try to change the church. Don't try to change what historic Christianity is. I would say the same thing of progressives. Progressives who do not believe in the doctrine of sin anymore, who don't believe in the exclusive claims of Christ, they need to just leave. Leave the Christian faith behind. Because if you're going to step out of accord with the founding documents of the Christian faith, which is the Bible, then intellectual honesty would demand that you simply abandon it altogether. Why try to use Christian terminology and Christian words and phrases when you know full well you don't actually believe what those phrases have meant historically and what they mean in their original context. Salvation is salvation from sin and the wrath of God because of sin. And we're saved by the supernatural work of a supernatural redeemer, the God-man, our Lord Jesus Christ. Fully God and fully man. This is the only way that we can be redeemed from hell is that he died on the cross for our sins in real history. I remember listening to a good theologian say, Jesus bled real blood that was red and it was RH typable. And it was real wood that he was nailed to. And real spikes were driven through real wrists into that real wood. And this man who was flesh and blood just like us really died. And he really came back to life. And his whole work, his whole life, his whole humiliation and his obedience to God's law, and his taking the punishment of his people's sins upon himself. That is the basis, the sole basis of our salvation. And that is what salvation is, salvation from the wrath of God, Romans 5, 8, and 9. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if Christ is not risen from the dead, then our faith is in vain and we are found to be false witnesses. The whole thing hinges on historical facts. The facts of Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection in real history. If those are not facts, there is no Christianity at all. And if people don't believe that those are facts, that those are historical facts, they must not call themselves Christians because they most certainly are not Christians. It doesn't matter if people use traditional phrases and pious sounding language. If they don't mean what the Bible means, if they don't believe what the Bible teaches, they might as well stay home on Sundays and watch football and call themselves something else, but they can't call themselves Christians. That's why I wrote the book, Christianity and Liberalism. Liberalism is not Christianity. It's something else entirely. It's naturalism. It's the belief that God doesn't intervene. There's no need for salvation from sin. There's no hell to fear, no heaven to be hoped for. The liberals ultimately located everything in this world. Everything became about the social improvement. And the irony was, the more they took their eyes off of God, the more they lost 
the earth. Because what do all those mainline churches, what are they all, what are they all doing now? The social causes they once stood for, they're all pro-abortion now. They don't care about injustice anymore. You lose the theological foundation, you lose the supernatural origin of Christianity, you will lose everything, and you will never have any impact on society. None. And that's exactly what's happened to those mainline denominations as they've gone the way of the wind. So we made it a little bit further than we did last time, but um, we're at the 15-minute mark. So thank you for watching or for listening.